Hello, my lovelies, and welcome back. And today, yes, we are talking about how to let go of your special handbags. It's not an easy one, but it is a doable one. And it might not be handbags. It could be that person in your life. It could be that toxic friend. But I have started and I will finish with handbags, but you can relate it to what you like. So stick around by the end of the video. You are going to be a changed person. everybody, welcome back. Yes, today we are talking about how to let go of that special handbag in your collection. How do we do it? Or a bag that's not serving you anymore because I've learned a lot in my downsizing in the past year, six months, and I want to share it with you and help it with you. Before we go any further, of course, I want to share the fragrance of today. And today I've robbed my daughter's Narciso Rodriguez, and it is called Poudre. It is a beautiful, musky, white floral, sweet vanilla, rose. Got lots of flowers in there. It's musky, as I said, vanilla, woody. Oh, yes, beautiful. Uh, the powder and the sweetness and the vanilla and all that floral is very, very Katie, I have to say. And she is going to be wearing this. And her, she is my shout out of today. My shout out of today is my darling daughter, Katie Dunn, who I have never given a shout out to. So I decided to do that because I've robbed her perfume and because she's going to the T.Y. Ball, ball tomorrow night. So I wish her and all her friends a beautiful night. Have an amazing time, my love. She's very excited today. She's picking up her dress, she's doing her tan, her nails, her whole lot. She's 16, it's very exciting and it's lovely. I'm enjoying it along with her, watching her going through the whole process. It's absolutely gorgeous. So have a fabulous time, my love. So that is today. In here, the notes are, it has Bulgarian rose, it has jasmine, it has orange blossom, musk, as I said, it has cedar, patchouli. It's very aromatic and uh, yeah, lots of that woody notes and lots of musk. So it's a really nice one and very, very affordable. It's in about 50 euro. So very affordable if you're interested in that one. And I recommend also going for this kind of size, which is about a 30 mil, I think, or 50 mil, I'm not sure which size, but 30 or 50 mil, so you can pop it in your hand luggage or your carry-on going traveling. Brilliant. Plus it doesn't go off, you know? We like to be smart and clever on this channel. Well, we think we are anyway. Okay. So without further ado, I have seven points for you today. And stick with me until, because I have a bonus tip at the end that you're not going to want to miss, I'm telling you. So the first point in how to let go of handbags. And as I said, in my research and when I was doing my downsizing and curating and selling, I have learned, because it was difficult. It was very, very difficult. So number one, I would advise and recommend you, and I'm telling you, this will help. If you have a higher cause or reason for why you're selling that handbag or letting go of that person or toxic friend or whatever it may be in your life. In my case, it was like, if I wanted to buy this beauty, the Birkin, she would have been one of my higher reasons at one point. So you have to find your why. In the next scenario, if I want to go and buy the Kelly, I'm still not 100% sure about that yet, as in would I get the use out of it. It's a stunning bag, there's no question on that, but I want to make sure before I buy it because it's not easy to sell either. So have a higher cause, have a higher reason as to why you're making the decision in the first place to let go of that special bag, particularly the ones we still love. We may not use them, like my trendy CC. That is for sale, by the way, for anybody who wants to make reasonable offer, leave it down below, DM me at, at Vivser, V-I-V-S-E, or on Instagram. And that, I'm, I may bring it down a little bit for those of you who are interested. I'm going to let that bag go because I don't use it. So I had to find a bigger reason, a bigger why, a big cause, and all the rest of it, because I love that bag. I absolutely, and even some of you have come on and go, Viv, don't, don't, don't let that bag go. She suits your personality. She's really, really, and she is, she's beautiful, but I don't use her. You know, that color does, does not work for me. I prefer darker caramel. If I had her, maybe got her in black or something. You know, it's the country I live in as well. So that's number two, find your higher cause, find your reason and find your why. It will help you to no end. Number two, list all the advantages and disadvantages of the bag, how you use it, and also the pros and cons. So if you kind of say to yourself, get yourself a sheet of paper, this does for going for a job and you know, selecting boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, whatever it may be, and literally go, okay, am I going to have to baby it? Could be a reason, that could be a disadvantage. It doesn't rain a lot in the country that you're in. You know, does it scratch easily? Can I carry it cross body? What age am I? What, you know, all the disadvantages and advantages. Is it big enough for my needs? I have a baby, I need a bigger bag, that bag is not going to suit me. Advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons. You are not going to believe when you see it written down, it's all very well going, yeah, I've thought about that a lot. Write it down when you see it in black and white. 
it's unreal how it will change. It really will change your mind and just solidify your decision. Number three, remove, said Bagoshta, as it is in Irish, in Guelga, the bag. Remove the bag from your collection, from your beautiful display, whether it be on your shelves, in your wardrobe, in your closet, wherever your, your, your collection is. Remove that bag that you have doubts about. If you're not 100%, this is a lot of money that we're spending on our items, on our bags. And if you're not 100% about your decision and what's in your closet or wardrobe, it shouldn't be there. I don't think it should be there. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of real estate to be holding up. And you know, we have to maintain these bags. Remove the bag, take her away, put her in a box, tidy her up, put her in a different room for a couple of months. See, do you even miss the bag? See, do you even think about the bag? Because sometimes the whole decision can be overwhelming and we don't want to commit. That's where we actually have a block for the very start. We don't want to commit. We're like, oh my God, but what if, what if, what if I have made the wrong decision? What if the mood I'm in today is completely different to the mood I'm in tomorrow? Oh, what if the price goes up and then I've lost a thousand euro and the price increases, I could make more money in it. and just gonna put that bag out of sight for four months. See, do I even miss it? Do I even think about it? That will really make your decision concrete. Number four, this is a great one and I have my decluttering video coming up. So stick around for that one. Obviously subscribe and uh, hit the bell because you will then be notified when you get the videos served out to you and you won't miss. The decluttering one is gonna be good. Yes, this helped me a lot. I had basically three boxes. I had a keep box, I had a time will tell box, which is kind of a get out clause. And it kind of eases your way into this whole decision making process. It's a really good one. Time will tell box. And then the third one is a sell, donate, let go, trash box. So again, if you have your main bag, say 10, 15, 20, however, five, one, however many handbags you have, and you go, right, I want to let go. I think, I think, I haven't really made the decision yet. I want to let go of this bag. So we have the keep box. There's absolutely no way that's going anywhere. We have the time will tell. Put the bag in the time will tell box or the clothes or the man or whatever it is. Time will tell how this goes. Maybe one day we'll find out. And then the third one is the sell box. That gives you a get out clothes. It takes all that kind of overwhelming emotion, worry and regrets and what if and all the rest of it out of the equation. Also give yourself time, kind of the 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes to look in your wardrobe and go, because sometimes if you look in and it's overwhelming and you go, oh God, I just can't start that today. Set your clock on your phone and go 20 minutes just to have a look what I can take out of my bag collection. So that will really help. Just give it 20 minutes and then you go, I have to go on with the rest of my day. I'm not spending the whole day doing this. Now, number five is Take pictures. This really helped me. I did this last year. I had a lot of my children's baby clothes and a lot of baby stuff, a lot of modeling stuff and modeling pictures and lots and lots of, lots of clutter, if you like, upstairs in my sauna upstairs. And it was all in there. I never used the sauna. We used it as a, basically a dump room. And I, all, and I said, this is a disgrace. So I emptied out the whole, myself and Katie, we emptied out the whole sauna. Yes, we took every single item out and I took pictures of the stuff that I found really difficult to let go. Really, really difficult. Now the kids use the sauna, it's amazing. And it's amazing that I know that anything on that top floor, nothing of it is mine. Katie has taken over that floor, now it's hers. So that's another job I don't have to do. So that is amazing. Take pictures. I've done it with bags. Every bag I sell, I take pictures of the front, the back, the bottom, the inside, the outside, the tags, everything. So if I ever feel I really, really miss that bag, I just look at the pictures. Because that's exactly the same as when we go into our closet and we go, oh, look at the bag, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, sitting there, lovely. I don't choose it, but it looks lovely. It's the very same thing, we're mad. Yep, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> And the next one, number six, is that sentimental reason, that sentimentality is what makes us hold on so tightly to our children, to their clothes, to our memories, to our bags, to anything we have acquired in life, is that sentimental feeling. Like attachment and desire are really, they're the root of all suffering, they really are. So basically we have to free up you know, our, our magnetic energy. And this was another reason, it makes our life so much easier when we detach from all that kind of, it's not even detaching, you can still have it and hold it and put it in a box in your, in your head of memories. But letting go, I have to say, frees up and makes way for other things to come into your life, even when you're letting go of the sentimental things. And again, this bag for me holds now special meaning because of how it happened, for lots of reasons obviously, but how it happened and the week that I got this bag, I had just let go of, if you remember, I've said this in a video before, my Neo Noe in the Louis Vuitton, 
and the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30. And I'd sold those two bags the week I was offered this bag. I didn't know that was gonna happen. I really, sincerely, did not know that was gonna happen. Those two bags went and this one came into my life. So it's, I was, it, like, it was just a proof to me that, oh my God, I actually said it to Katie, this was supposed to happen. I just said, like, it was hard for me to let those two bags go. I liked them, but I loved them, but I wasn't using them. So I said, right, that's it, they have to go, they have to go. I had I had the chats with Katie, she's very sensible sometimes. 16 year olds are way sensible than their mothers. But anyway, I said, I don't use, she goes, mom, you don't use it. I said, I know, but it's hard, they're lovely and they're brand new, they're pristine. And they've went to two beautiful subscribers who are delighted with them, which even makes it even better. And they're using them and getting value out of them. And then this beauty came into my life the very same week I had just let go of those two bags as if it was meant to be. Now you've heard people talk about this before and I, I'm sure a lot of us go, what a load of baloney. It's not, I promise you. There's some energy you create in letting things go that makes way for new things in your life. I know I'm divorced, so I definitely have experience in this area, you know? <laughs> Number seven is understanding meaning. This is a massive one. Meaning. Nothing has meaning in our lives except for the meaning that we give it, except for the meaning that we attach to it. Same with the handbags. They're all just things. Now again, people, it's the same thing. Nothing has meaning unless what we attach to it. For example, even in life, say me, say a mom letting her kid go to college and you go, oh my God, and why, why do we have empty, empty nest syndrome? And why does this happen? Or letting go of a boyfriend. Only you want to hold on to them because you're kind of validated by them or because of the meaning you've attached to that or it creates your identity. And what, who are you without this person in your life? And you know, moms particularly, because you have served your children for possibly 20 years and now they're gone and now it's just you and possibly your husband partner or maybe just you by yourself who are you now it's the meaning we attach to our bags to our children to our partners to everything we have in life it's like what now is my role as a parent i'm losing my sense of self all these worries in here the memories the scenarios past relationships all this kind of stuff again your validation looking for validation or approval of are you good enough are we good enough or you know all of this kind of stuff if i let go of the bag what if i never get it again and and i won't get it for the same price and Oh, it's crazy. So you have to let go of all of that. We have been literally patterned and socially conditioned into being addicted to similar and familiar emotions. And that's a fact from childhood. You know, we morph into these people pleasers and what we think people want us to be and all the rest of it. I know I'm kind of getting away from, from bags, but when I was researching this video, it's all connected. It all has the same kind of relevance as in it's the meaning we attach to things. And basically sometimes if your needs are not met, it, as a child, it, it creates this pattern and you, you put the meaning onto things. So I have that, so that validates who I am and how well I have done in life and status and how successful I am. Whether people think it or not, it's a fact. And people might go, oh, it's just because I enjoy them. Yeah, it is, it is, you enjoy them. But I mean, a lot of the things that we have, we don't use. So is it really because you enjoy them? I enjoy looking at them. You could look at them in a magazine. You could look at them and take pictures on your phone. Let's be real, people, let's be real. You can change the meaning to anything. I want you, if there's anything you take away from this video, I want you to take away that. You can change the meaning to anything. It's mind over matter. Now, I had told you guys I was in the hospital yesterday and I had, by the time you see this, it'll be a week ago, but I had a, an endoscopy done. So I had a camera and tube put right down my throat because I have problems in my esophagus. But they asked me if I wanted to be sedated. Now, I kind of did, but I drove in and I had nobody to pick me up or collect me, so I had to drive home. So I thought, well, if I get sedated, I'll have to, it'll be 48 hours and all that kind of stuff. And I want to drive and I want to come home to Katie and Ben and all the rest of it. So I decided not to be sedated. It's not a pleasant, if anybody has ha has it done, to put the tube and everything else down inside, but I got mind over matter. And the consultant was like, she was treating me like a 10 year old or five year old, it was great. She was like, she's like, Vivian, she says, you're excellent. You can imagine, it's like if you're choking or whatever, putting something down your throat, and then when they pull it back out and it's in there for seven minutes. And it's not very pleasant, but it's, you know, it needs to be done. But I literally, I was breathing through the whole thing and your mouth is wide open with this thing in and I'm on a beach somewhere and, and it's mind over matter. It's the same with changing meaning attachment to things. Very same thing. I have let go of so much in the last couple of years. I feel lighter. I feel cleaner, which is kind of weird. It's like I know where everything is in my house. My handbag collection is more manageable. I'm enjoying things because I'm not flustered and I'm not like, you just feel heavier when you have all this stuff around you. It's, it's just weird to explain. You know, you often see when people whether they split up with someone, they can become passionate about something or start a new venture or business, YouTube, whatever, write a book. You've often seen that change their hair. If you reduce your handbags, like which I have, you can just enjoy them in different ways or make way for new ones, which is always nice. That's my why. 
<laughs> change it up because we get bored that's all that's wrong with us we get bored with all the same old same old and that's why we keep buying new things it's not really because oh, we need this we need that we get bored even even with something as expensive as like your Birkin or it's not that you get bored with a Birkin or whatever but you do you look at it like and you go that's gorgeous now yeah what can I do next what can I do next that was the next thing and the next thing and the next thing bonus bonus tip last tip thank you for sticking around and I hope these tips will help you I know they will because they've helped me the bonus tip basically is the backwards law basically it is the more that we seek and desire the more we push it away you know it, it, it goes further away from us the more we don't have it so these are the traps of personal development it's, it's almost like if you have this thing like oh I'm not good enough or you want someone's approval people that want people's approval get it the least and people that really don't care or don't want anyone else's approval get it the most they get the most respect they get the most admiration because they are happy with who they are what they have and they're not seeking anything from anybody else. I think this is such a great point. I think it's so valid and true. And I just think if you just let it go, if we learn to let it go, forget about the what ifs. What if the Birkin prices go up? What if I'm making a mistake selling my trendy CC and, and, and next year Chanel puts it up to 10 grand? What if, what if, what if? Let it go, let the result go. Let the universe deal with all of that. And then that will free you up, make your decision. I have not, I have to say, and to anybody out there that's looking to go into this process and to sell a few bags and to downsize, I haven't regretted one single bag, not one single bag that I've let go of. And there's a few I have, I was like, really, will I, will I, will I, won't I? And I was musing over it and I was taking up precious time in thinking and putting all my energy into that decision. So get rid of the handbags you don't need. I hope all of those points have really, really helped you out today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Show me a bit of love with a like and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next. Stick around for the declutter video. And until next time, be kind, be safe, be compassionate, and I love you lots. Mwah.